Hi, I'm Christina Frias. I am a guest lecturer this spring quarter at UCLA 2014. Uh, my class is called The Art of Performance. And this quarter, we looked at seminal Chicana Chicano works, including theater performance, radical collectives, solo performance, murals, as well as flash mobs and device theater collectives. Throughout the quarter, the students worked on voice and speech to support their public speaking skills, as well as their confidence. And uh, we also focused on special emphasis on performing their personal histories. So what you're about to see will be individual work that they have written and created, uh, and then two group pieces that fall under sort of the devised theater uh, work. And some of these pieces have been inspired by a young man, Jose Estrada, Jojo, a young colleague uh, who passed too soon but left us an incredible creative voice and we have been inspired by him and many of these pieces are dedicated to Jojo and his family. Thank you. Okay, so Dreams. <clears throat> I find dreams in my childhood. Dreams that I call simple dreams. I dream to feel the soothing caress from my mother. Dream to feel the sense of refuge from my father. Dream that my dreams were merely not just dreams. Wait, did I just say the word dreams like 10 times? Maybe I should not call it a simple dream. It's more like a complicated, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, complicated fantasies that I made up in my head when I was a child complicated. I was just a child who's longing for a parent's love. So let me tell you my spiel of how my odd, long, complicated dreams started. I was born on August 9, just a little before the Gulf War and the Middle East. I was a war baby, I should say. Two weeks later, my mom and dad left me. They left for duty to the Middle East. I dreamed of becoming a bird. Well, because birds have feathers. They can fly. I dreamed of flying 7,507 miles across the world to tell my mom, mom, dad, Please come back sooner. I dreamed to fly 7,507 miles across the world to tell my parents, Mom, Dad, mahal na mahal ko kayo. I am scared. I am scared because the war might permanently, permanently tear my family apart. I am scared. 
Natatakot ako. I am scared because the news said the war has begun and the little piece that ha that that's left is now long gone. Tengo miedo. I am scared. For 20 years, I hold on to this dream. I did not lose my grip. I am a product of that hope because my dreams came true. But I know somewhere out there, there's that child that, was, that once was like me. And for all I can hope for and dream for now is for that child to also have her or his dreams come to life. Stand here, I'm gonna take a picture of you between the parents. Beautiful. Yeah, brand new discoveries. Go right in the middle. Next person can start studying that. I'll go like this. Yay! Did you smile when I took the picture? Yeah, you did. Okay. Took your time. I found the dreams of my inner child who was long forgotten. His dream to fly and touch the moon, to save the earth from doom. Yeah, the bad guys, they never had a chance. Where do our dreams go? Where does the time go? I really don't know. I feel like it was just yesterday I heard your voice. What are you doing? Don't do that. You're cheating. One, two, three, ready or not, here I come. We're ready or not, here I come. Yeah. My mom. When I was younger, my mom used to say, Mijo, cuídese y no hable con extraños, okay? Yeah, you always did like to play hide and seek, but this? This doesn't feel like we're playing. Where does the time go? Where do our dreams fade away? I think I might know. But for today, I guess I could play like we used to back in the day. Yes. <laughs> I love it. You held it. You held the moment. Yes, you did it. Yes. And I got the photo of you already, so that's great. Thank you. Good job. Vitalizer. Baby soft flesh. Viable signs of wrinkle improvement in just 24 hours. Conniving slogans plastered all around us, over processed, over powdered, over computerized faces of women. My mother pacing down the aisles looking for the perfect wrinkle cream to add to her collection of 50 in her bathroom cabinet. Mija, ¿qué piensas de esta? She says as she hands me an overpriced $20 tube the size of a traveling toothpaste. De veras, no sé, mamá. She looks at the products on the aisle, grabs the tube and chuckles, a ver cómo me va. As she walks away, I wish I could go, I wish I could go run. After her, grab the stupid tube and tell her, Mamá, tú ya eres bella. No necesitas esas porquerías. 
not many people get to live as long as you and I love that I can see the strength you've obtained from the dragons you've slayed all over your face. But I don't do this. I walk over to the next aisle looking for the perfect blush or mascara or lipstick to add to my collection. I don't need you, I don't need you, but I want you. Lipstick plumpers, blushes galore, pumping mascara wands, adding volume, adding length, layers upon layers onto our faces, burying paints, liquid paints, to paint a new story every day, letting the world know this is me today. See, I could tell you that I prefer one face over another, but why would that matter when all I see are walking works of art? Painting your body is a skill. Unfortunately, it's one our society has mastered at selling. I don't need you, I don't need you, but I want you. Kick back, dude. You've been too stressed. You're graduating. Just kick back. Chacha says as she passes me the roller, but see, that's what they want you to think. They want you to think that everyone is doing enough, that the revolution has already happened, that's all part of their plan. At least, that's what Profe said. See, it's been months since I've enclosed this friend within my lips and let its serenity fill me within, but I just can't go back, not since that last trip. And I used to be able to just lay in the sand and listen to the sounds of the ocean. But now the waves crashing is just another ticking clock reminding me that I'm wasting precious time. I should be organizing. I should be informing my people. I should be yelling the truth at the top of my lungs, anything but falling into their plan of just kicking back and watching the struggle cycle back. I don't need you, I don't need you, but I want you. I can still feel your fingertips lingering on my back. Your warm embrace hangs tight on my body, but I just can't seem to recollect your face. But baby, I don't want you to take offense, but after all the numbness of blending them together, melting them together so I wouldn't have a face to long for in the night, but see, I don't need your presence in my life. I can still feel your touch in the warmth of the sun. Yet every time your memory wanders close, all I see are eyes. First it's just one pair, then two, three, six, nine, and all that's left is hunger. Hunger for full ownership of this baby soft flesh. But once it's been stretched, there's no more magic left. And though I don't need you, I don't need you, I know that you can see me, and I need you to know that my story has many chapters, and I'm just now drafting my next. Y ahora, ¿qué piensas de esta mija? It's funny how, when you're young, you can't wait to grow up, but when you're grown, you can't wait to go back. I remember as a child, looking up the sky and thinking, who will I be? What will I do? Will I get married? Will he be handsome? And then one day, life slaps you across the face and says, you have Graduation, school, grad school, wedding, wedding. Who's getting married? Me? What? With who? And you get lost in life. You get lost in time. Stuck on autopilot for so long, you don't know what's going on. Five years. Five years, look at this ring. I should be happy, 
This was the plan. It's funny how, when you're young, you can't wait to grow up. But when you're grown, you can't wait to go back. It's me or your career. Pick one. So I chose. I chose my career. I chose to be independent. I chose to be strong. I chose to be the strong woman my mom taught me to be. The strong woman like my mother who cuddled me as she crossed the border. As a child, I constantly found myself in a world of charisma and imagination. In a world where I was Rapunzel, the princess with beautiful, long hair. This was a world of complete happiness. But my reality was different. It was one that roared louder than a lion and hurt deeper than fire burning your flesh. It was one where the, the princess was not the heroine. One where the big bad wolf won most of the time. What pow? What pow? It was one where the big bad wolf constantly told me not to dream or aspire because, because pitiful girls like me were not meant to dream. And to be quite honest, the girl you see here believed that. She grew up carrying these weights, ouch, that were so heavy, these weights of feeling worthless. But despite it all, she still continued to dream. That big bad wolf constantly told her, tú, <laughs> tú no vales nada. But despite it all, I still continue to dream. I constantly whisper to myself, Tú, tú sí puedes, tú sí puedes, tú, tú sí puedes, tú sí puedes, tú sí puedes. And this phrase has remained as fruitful as it ever was. The girl you see here is breaking barriers. She is dreaming. She is moving. She is prospering. She was once told that she couldn't dream, but she finally is because she has finally realized that she can. With courage, she finally grabs this fragile crown and she crowns herself because she has finally gained the confidence she always lacked. The princess has finally taken control of her own kingdom. She won the victory. Hey, what's up, Mr. Criminal Puppet? I'm out. I hate it when people judge me. There goes the cholo, or the thug, or the misogynist. I'm from South Central LA, 
where you learn about the codes, B's and C's, people coming up to me saying, what up, blood? Or, what up, cuz? Cuz in the hood, only the strong survive. See, people used to tell me I wasn't going to make it, starting from a middle school teacher saying, drop out, because either you're gonna end up gang banging, drug dealing, or in jail. Why are you wasting my time? Then in high school, things got even more interesting. Yeah, I was a class clown, and people used to tell me, come on, fool, you're funny. Say a joke, you're hilarious. Well, students, can anybody tell me why the X chromosome is more dominant than the Y chromosome? Da, 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 da. Well, X is the dad and Y is the mom and daddy's always on top. <laughs> Later on that night, as I was waiting for my ride, two people came up to me and said, what up cuz, what you got? Either you give us that phone or we'll shoot you. Just another night. Later on that next day, this boy was kicked out and worked at a body shop. Joven, ¿qué estás haciendo aquí? Cuando yo empecé este trabajo, yo nomás tenía ocho años. Ahora tengo cuarenta. Si yo fuera joven como vos, puchica, yo estuviera en la escuela. And that was just work. At home, it was things like, Malagradecido. Nosotros no venimos a los Estados Unidos para que vos seas carrocero. Yo no traje este mundo para que vos trajas como burro. So I go back to school. Lock High School was like my great awakening. When at age 15, I began to see my homies become parents, gangbanging, in jail, or joining tagging crews telling me, Hey, you're back, homie. You're down. Join us. Hell nah, I don't want to end up like these fools. So I went back to King Drew Magnet High School. And this boy began to change his act one day, one day at a time, got his act right, graduated, and got accepted to Humboldt State University. Ha! This class clown had the last lap. But being 13 hours away from home, lonely and raining, and hearing comments saying, wow. Mexicans are smart after all. Went to Camino, graduated, and now I'm here at UCLA, UCLA, fight, fight, fight. Where I meet some of my peers telling me, hey, I'm Isai, um, I texted you, we're in the same group. So, that doesn't matter. You always have something irrelevant to say in class. Yeah, but it's true, like, there is a lack of males in this institution. Yeah, but that's you guys' problem. Um, why don't you like, I don't know, get away from me. Um, I'll talk to you later, don't text me. Just like, we'll talk in class, bye. And some of my teachers, wow, they amaze me. Well, students, today we're gonna learn about the hegemonic discourse of a colonized mind. We'll read a hundred, I'm sorry, 320 pages of the colonized mind. What colonized mind? You will write a 10 page essay explaining the theoretical processes of a colonized mind. Sorry, I can't help you, I have to go do research. Those days, I just wanna run, hide, and not be remembered at all. One day, when I went home to go visit my parents, my little sister came up to me and said, you're my role model. Because despite of it all, you always have a smile on your face. You went to Humboldt State, El Camino, got denied from UCLA, appealed, and now you're there. And that's why I look up to you. So I begin to change. I will not let other people's opinions about me make them their reality. I will graduate UCLA, 
I will be the best big brother that I can be. I will share my struggles and share to others that if I can do it, why can't you? I will share the three P's that I've discovered. Patient, positive, and persistent. And despite of it all, I will hold on to my, my dream and make it possible. And that in the end, I will win. It took me a while to realize that the experiences I had in my, ch in my childhood affected my personality and perception. I looked at everything through a realistic, or rather pessimistic, lens. <laughs> I kept all my emotions bottled up inside because I was too scared to let them out. I didn't want to seem weak. I wanted to be a big, strong girl for my mom even though she didn't ask me to. I often wonder what things would have been like if my parents wouldn't have gotten a divorce. It's weird to think that this other alternative reality could have existed if one simple action had been different. I feel like I would have been a completely different person. I imagine myself being someone who's more outgoing, more willing to take risks, not afraid to speak her mind, not afraid of confrontation. I feel like I became somewhat submissive, and that's something I don't want to be anymore, which is why I decided at the end of my senior year that college was going to be different for me. I'm turning into the person I want to be, and that person does not follow the stereotypes set forth by society. To, in our society, women are categorized and judged based on how they look. Well, let me tell you, I don't believe in the guidelines society has set forth, and I refuse to follow them. I owe it to myself to be the person I want to be, and I have a broad range of interests. I like to dress up and wear lipstick. And take my selfie. So does that mean that I'm self-centered, super girly, oh my god, I broke a nail, and stuck up? Nope. I also like to listen to rap. So does that mean that I must be some little ghetto gangster? Hey, what's up? Nope. I try hard in school and do my work to try and get good grades. So does that mean that I must be some little nerd? Nope. I also like to go out on the weekends and party with my friends. So does that make me some wild party girl? Nope. The things I'm into may make up the person I am, but they do not define who I am. And for those who think the opposite, well, to hell with you. Because I spend too much time suppressing the person I want to be, and I'm not about to let anyone continue to do that to me. Broken dreams, dreams chipping away, away into dust, away into gold. Mi papá, mi papá works from sunrise to sundown. Mi papá is sun kiss red. Mi papá has the color of envy. Mi papá has the expression of peace. Mi papá is golden. Mi papá 
Mi papá es madera. He's a paletero. And I'm not talking about ice cream seller. I'm talking about a hard working wood palette maker. Mi papá is all the colors of the rainbow. And at the same time, no colors at all. Mi papá es un misterio. He has hidden secrets in his heart. He doesn't let just anyone in. Kind of like me. And kind of not like me. Mi papá left his life, left his family, left his mother in Mexico. En un pueblo chiquito conocido como el Durazno. My father gave it all for me, for me to have a spot in this university. And he did it all unknowingly, perhaps absentmindedly, without, without an idea that every night he stayed up late working, he inspired me, inspired me to make sure none of his efforts were in vain. He never told me, do your homework or apply to college. He spoke to me patiently and lovingly in the only way he knows how to love. Aim for the moon. Even if you miss, you'll land amongst the stars. He told me, Echale muchas ganas, mija. He instilled in me the values that his mother instilled in him, the values of the grandmother I never met. My roots, my heart, lays with all the loved ones that gave their lives for me, that, get, that gave their life for me. For me to have a spot in this university. By give up their lives, I mean give up their dreams. Give up their dreams without knowing me. Give up their dreams, although perhaps absentmindedly, unknowingly, and without knowing me. Maybe, maybe they know me now. Maybe they see me, see me from their place in heaven. I think. They see me, see me on this campus, see me in a place where I feel unseen. I think they're mis angelitos de la guardia. Mi mamá. <laughs> Mi mamá. A house, a house of unfulfilled dreams. A house of broken dreams a house of survival, a house of hope, a house of continuous dreams. Or are they hopeless dreams? I think they're hopeful dreams. Mi mamá's full of hopeful dreams. Mi mamá's una hondureña. Mira vos que esta huirra mía es bien inteligente. Huh, bien lista. Si supieras, ni te cuento. Mi mamá es alegría y enojo a la misma vez. Es una mujer candelosa, una mujer extravagante, una mujer dramática, una mujer chistosa, una mujer cariñosa y amorosa. Ay, mami, tenés hambre. ¿Qué quieres? Te hago unos huevitos. ¿Quieres un juguito? Ay, mamá, disculpa. Mi negra sufre en esta universidad. Huh. Esa cosa es seria. Esa muchachota que parís cosa seria. Sin mi hija, yo sería nadie. 
That's right. My mother has dedicated her life to her children. I'm the youngest. I'm the baby. I'm about to be 20, and my mama lives for me. My mama lives for me. Mi mamá es una mujer misteriosa. She has hidden, tiene secretos en los lugares más profundos de su corazón. Mi mamá es un tesoro y yo la adoro. Aunque me haga enfurecer con sus escenas de locura y enojo, Dios me da paciencia. Dios me dio el tesoro de mi vida, mi mami. Now me, who am I? I am who I am. I'm Victoria. Or am I Victoria? I'm victoriosa, that's who I am. Who am I in all this glory and misery? I'm golden, that's who I am. I have my father's humility and my mother's charisma, my mother's fierceness. I have mi mamá es hondureña en mí, and mi papá es mexicano en mí. I am who I am. I am a creation from the heavens above, a creation for my perfectly imperfect parents. Outro is music. Outro is art. Outro is inspiration. Outro fills my imagination. Outro gives my life meaning. Outro releases all my worries. Outro allows me to think beyond this reality. Outro allows me to paint my imagination. Outro lets me be who I am. I am an artist. The impossible is where I want to be. Let me be in my imagination. My art expresses my reality, my imagination, my memories. I need my colors, I need my music. Blue is my sky, my water. Green is my fresh grass, my leaves. Orange is my glow, my flame. Yellow is my sunshine, my tulips. Brown is my tree trunk, my people. Purple is my butterflies, my flowers. Red is my blood, my love. Black is my shadow, my darkness. White is my light, my softness. All my memories are filled with colors. How to keep on the king my own land. Facing tempests of dust, I'll fight till the end. Creatures in my dreams race up and dance with me. Now and forever, I'm your king.
Paltrow is in my present, in my past, and will continue to my future. My time, my music, my art, my memories, they're all valuable and precious to me. Always appreciate the time you have because you never know when it will end. What is beauty? Beauty is an illusion casted by the mind. Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Beauty is all around us. Beauty is not Photoshop. It is not found in those magazines. It is not in those makeup bags. What is beauty? Well, to me, beauty is my mom. Beauty is my two sisters. Beauty is everything that's around us. I cannot tell you where you can find beauty, but I can show you. I could tell you, I could show you where you can find it. Where you can see it. Look, where you can find it. dreamer, being independent and empowered. It is the love you give others, giving a tender kiss, a piece of comfort and advice, having the ability to unite with the community in despair. It is far beyond your physical attributes. It is embracing your culture, your roots, your heritage, your own people. It is having a beautiful heart, a heart filled with warmth and admiration, having beautiful hands, hands used to lift those in need, having beautiful eyes to see the injustices in humanity, having beautiful feet to walk in the footsteps of others. It is the courage of walking barefooted in a floor filled with broken glass, seeing the blood pour, yet knowing it is not in vain as long as another soul is aided. Beauty is love, beauty is peace, beauty is happiness. According to the media is to be thin with long hair and light skin. The image of an ideal beauty is continuously advertised everywhere, everywhere we turn, and because of this, the mass society 
has accepted this image and caused people to strive to achieve this ideal beauty. But to me, that's not what beauty is. In my eyes, being beautiful means so much more than how you look physically. I believe beauty is defined by your character, not your looks. My sister is a perfect example of someone I find extremely beautiful. My sister used to encompass society's idea of beauty up until she had my niece. She no longer has a thin physique that gets idolized. However, to me, she's just as beautiful as she's always been. She has one of the best personalities in the world. She's normally extremely bubbly, adventurous, funny, outgoing, and extremely kind-hearted. These are the qualities that make her so beautiful to me. She's strong and independent and not afraid to speak her mind or go after what she wants. I idolize my sister for this and can only hope to be as beautiful as she. Look at me. I may not be a standard model, but I'm a role model. My unique look is beauty. My flaws is beautiful. My personality is beautiful. I don't need a size zero when I look good in a size nine. I don't need an extra small size when I look good in a medium size. I don't need to be as tall as a model when I look good just as right now. I don't need a gap between my thighs when I look good as they touch together. Who's beautiful? I am. I'm beautiful. The never-ending, everlasting quest for beauty. See, when I was younger, I too pleaded to my mom, Mommy, estoy bonita. She'd laugh and picking me up, consoling my aching void. She'd say, Mija, eres eso y mucho, mucho más. Gazing up at the sky, she'd trace the clouds and put them back to me. And I never understood her fascination in the star-filled quiet nights, or her flores that she tended to every weekend. That is, until they traced their beauty back to her, and to every other face I have encountered. The petals vivid colors jumping out at me as they eagerly revealed their heart-pounding passion and latest triumph and the way their sharp thorns protruded, standing guard and ready to defend in their heart's honor. I can trace the beauty in the way their aging, increasing petals become even more stunning as a new battle scar appeared on their faces. But of all my favorite parts of the beauty within these fragrant flowers is their willingness to stand tall or dwindle away for the sake of a new flower to emerge and prosper. From these flowers, I've learned that beauty is not only selfish, but selfless all in one. video it all has to come to this tomorrow <laughs> 
Charles Manson can't okay, see you another day, but if you're black like Turkey, they're gonna steal you away. Let's all do a group photo, gather around. Can someone put on the lights? Martin, mm -hmm. did you get a couple photos of us? Give them a round of applause, that was amazing. Wow, 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 wow. You could get a couple of us. Oh, whoops, what did I just do? <laughs> <Okay. laughs> there we go. Uh -uh. Okay, let's all kind of gather in. Um, we're some people have to squat wait, the big, in the front. You can't, look on the screen. What? you can't wear the mask, my thing, because I'm going to wear the face. Of course. Yeah, she's talking about you. Can I bug you, you too? Yeah. yeah, I'm sure. going to make a little collage, like a little photo album. Okay. 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 So, so I'm going to take a few for different cameras. Yeah, so okay. Patient. Okay. All right. Come on Thank in, Maria. Thank you so much, Michael. Yeah, Michael, this is amazing. Make the <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> All right, here you are. One, two, three. Wow. All right, one, two, oh, it was slow. Okay. One, two, three. Good. Yeah, right. Two yeah, more yeah. cameras. Yeah. Oh my God, he's tired. <laughs> I love it. Okay. We should do something yeah. dramatic, you know what I mean? Yeah. This is pretty dramatic. One, <laughs> two, three. All right, one more. One, two, three. Very dramatic. Yeah. Change your shift, yeah, your yeah. pose. Strike a pose. Great, and then there's one more camera. <laughs> Make sure you email them to me and then I'll put them in a photo album. One, two, three. One, two, three. Got it. Yeah, <laughs> here's also round of applause. You guys are awesome. Yeah, thank you, Michael. Job, you were awesome. You were awesome. Um, let's do one last circle up. Just circle up real quickly. Um, beautiful work. Wow, wow, wow. I'm so glad we documented this. I got photos of everything, of your group work. Um, thank you. Uh, look at each other. Just take a moment. Breathe. Take off the mask. 
See, make eye contact. No, not no funny. Just real. See, see each other. See your classmates. See your classmates. See me. It's we've created a little community. We're and we're here for each other. We are colleagues, collaborators in this creative life in this time we have on planet Earth. So we have each other's emails. We're, we created an ensemble, a company, and you should be really, really proud. So on the count of three, let's just say thank you. One, two, three. <laughs> thank, thank you. Give yourself a round of applause. Thank you. I'm so very emotional. I actually, I could probably ball, but I ain't got no <laughs> um, but, you know, if anyone wants to say any final words, it's not the end, it's the beginning, but it's the end of this particular class. Um, my dream is that we all continue to meet. I'm available to you and, you know, we could do a, a salon once a month at my place <laughs> or spoken words around town turn or up. connect you to the theater community in L.A. Yeah, turn on. Okay, okay. Uh, any final words from anyone? No you pressure. guys are awesome and talented. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I just want to say that I feel really thankful to be here with all, all of you and just see how we've grown together and to see how like we started like very very like vulnerable with our pieces and to just being so empowered and so powerful and just speaking exactly like how we feel and like basically embracing our stories and like you know using our voices to to show the world exactly what we feel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just want to thank you. Thank you for like for dedicating time to us and dedicating time. Like, you were just so invested and you were passionate mm -hmm. about being here. And even if we would come in like late or like <laughs> asleep, you would make us wake up. And I feel like each and every one of us has really grown since we started the class. And I feel like it was a really beautiful quarter because of that. Thank you. Thank you so much. I want to say I want to thank you and like everybody else too because this is my favorite class of this quarter just because like I feel so comfortable and so welcome and like. I don't know, it's just nice to have, like, I guess, our, like you said, our little community, like, it's so, I don't know, it's nice to have, like, a little knit of people that, like, you don't have to be embarrassed in front of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I also want to say thank you to you uh, for bringing me back to my passion and to everybody for being part of this community that we created here. It was really beautiful seeing each other's pieces and learning from each other, and I really thank you all for um, just being part of, of this with me. Yeah. Um, I just want to say thank you. Um, even though I walked out in the beginning, I had my own issues what I was dealing with. But since like the whole quarter, like I'm dealing with them, and like this, this is like my favorite class. Even though like I don't show it a lot, but it, <laughs> oh, oh, you do. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but um, serial talk like it is my it is my favorite class and like. It taught me like how to like be theoretical and be like more open to opinions because I'm a little close-minded and I met like I've never been a, in a room full of educated women so it was like challenging for me at first but now I'm kind of <laughs> careful <laughs> like I'm careful what I say and now I'm I'm more open-minded and like I won't forget none of y'all like all of y'all up in my mind and in my heart. Um, I mean, we all got each other's contact, maybe Facebook it, but I mean, I also want to thank you because you took, like, you made an uncomfortable situation comfortable. It's, I see that all of us, like, grown, like, we grew up, and it sucks. It's not, it sucks that this class ended, but it ain't going to suck because one way or another, we're still going to be connected, hopefully. Um, but I want to thank you and also the class. Um, I like every single one of your pieces. Um, especially like there was funny moments, serious moments, emotional moments, and all that. Like I hope, I hope, and really wish that you come back and teach another class. Mm -hmm. Evaluation. <laughs> and if you don't, trust me, we're gonna make that happen one way or another. Yeah. So I just wanna say thank you to all of y'all, and this is it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, thank you, and and. What? For now. For now. <laughs> For now. And actually, I know people are going away to different places this summer, but coming back. So if it's, you know, end of summer, I'm happy to host us. All coming together just for fun to see what we're all doing. And the feeling that you're experiencing in this community, 
there are so many more opportunities to create this um, in whatever path you make, but particularly in the creative path because we tend to bear our souls and, and go to a vulnerable, deep places in the theater, in poetry, in music, in visual art, in all the things you created and we saw in class, um, all the artists we studied. So remember that as you move through life, through these quarters, find groups to participate with. Even if it's not the thing you're pursuing, like I always said, we want left brain, right brain, they inform each other. We will be better scientists, better doctors, better engineers if we are constantly activating our creative imaginations. Um, you will be fuller, wholer, holistic beings, and that's what we want. So, a round of applause! <laughs> Woo! Yeah, have a great rest of your week. Power through your finals. Um, I'll be looking for those artist statements. That's the final papal, but that should be fun. I know some of you have already worked on it.